Right. Thanks, Richard. Lynn. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Richard. That um, yeah. Can a picture launch a thousand words? I think we're used to thinking of pictures as ways to save on words. That as mammals, we're unusual and that we are very visually oriented. And I think that's where that adage a picture, you know, can cover a thousand words comes from. Is we're very drawn to, we readily interpret and understand, and are intrigued by visual images. But can we use pictures in our teaching to generate a thousand words? Clearly, I'm going to argue yes today and give you an example of how I've increasingly come to use pictures in my classrooms. I first began thinking about the strategic use of pictures after hearing another DTA recipient, Juan Pestana, talk several times about the importance of every 20 minutes or so in a lecture, creating a pause or a break just to disrupt the flow of information a little bit and re-engage student interest. And after thinking about that, I realized that I had started using pictures to some extent to do the same thing, but upon reflection, pictures can do a whole lot more. So I'm going to propose that a well-timed, provocative image can not only create the break that Juan is referring to, but also accomplish several other object objectives or meet several other common classroom challenges. Just a few that I threw up there capture student attention. I think that's partly what Juan was after. But also engage student interest in material in a way that maybe otherwise wouldn't happen. And I'll try to illustrate that. And then also stimulate class discussion. So as an example, I teach courses in animal behavior and evolutionary biology. One of the huge topics in my discipline is sexual selection, which is the concept Charles Darwin developed to explain the crazy sexual dimorphisms that we see in nature. And by sexual dimorphism, I'm referring to species in which the male and female have very di different phenotypes, or to put it in really in lay terms, they look and act differently. <laughs> Well, it would seem like that should be easy, right? We've got sex, we've got animals, we've got Charles Darwin. You know, how much help do you need? And you'd be surprised. <laughs> so, again, I'm going to illustrate how I've started to use increasingly use images to engage students a little bit more in my lectures. So, if we can go to the second slide. Oh, I have the I have the control. Okay. <laughs> so I can either tell you about sexual dimorphism and how cool and amazing it is, or I can show you something like this. Now, what the heck is this? You'll know by the end of the talk, but if nothing else, it kind of grabs your attention, right? It's colorful, not really clear what it is. Well, I'm gonna go one step further and show you a quick video clip. So if we could go to the video. And let's the man act. David Attenborough has made my job a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> but just taking that much video, we can now turn that, or in class, I would normally turn that into a multi-minute discussion. And for the sake of time today, rather than letting you respond to questions or ask questions, I'll just run through quickly some of the directions I would take. Starting with, what the heck was that animal? And you know, again, not to, to save time today, it turns out it's a six plumed bird of paradise. The name comes from those six feathers sticking out of the head. They're endemic to New Guinea. Already pretty cool, right? Ask you guys, was that a male or a female? I'm pretty sure everybody would guess male, at which point I would ask, why? What led you to that conclusion? We could have a discussion about that. We could go on, and usually the students are right on this, you know, so what's up with those six plumes sticking out of the head? What about that colored chest shield? Why, you know, wasn't that just enough, but instead the male has to use it, right, behaviorally with the little dance and flipping the epaulet? 
and kind of to start to think about what that bird is doing with all those different signals. The piece I didn't show you that kind of puts it all together is, I don't know if you noticed there was a branch kind of diagonally above him as he was displaying. That's where the female sits to watch all this. So from her perspective, it's black head, and then that epaulette flashes, and that's what she sees. And so that adds some dynamic to it. All of which is a way to start to introduce, OK, that was a really cool example of sexual dimorphism. Now, can we explain that? And that's where we bring in the conceptual material about sexual selection, what Darwin said about how female choice of males can potentially drive that entire system and that outcome. So I think that example might help to illustrate you know, how a good image can grab student attention. I'm going to make sure, I guess if you want to advance one last, the last slide there. Um, but I do think, and the more I've reflected on this, the more I've reflected on students and their responses in class, I think it does more than just create that 20 minute break or grab student attention. First, it does really stimulate questions and discussion among the classroom. They're like, Wow, that just blew their mind. And I admit, I pick examples that I want to do that. But second, and as I've, I've illustrated with the example, you can use that image as an entree then to an important conceptual element. And now, part of what that does is it couples this very memorable image with that concept. And that seems to create a distinctive memory that I found when I then review material, say, later in the semester in preparation for a midterm, if I ask, OK, what did Darwin say about sexual dimorphism, it may take students a minute to start to remember and recall, flip through their notes. But if I say, what was the concept associated with that crazy bird of paradise example? They're all over it, right? So that's created a different type of memory that they can access as their entry back into the conceptual material that was really the basis for the, the, the lecture. So I think that coupling of the image and the memory is very important. And it actually, during the rest of the course, can provide an important reference point that as we go on to talk about other topics, and show other animal examples is I want to link, say, sexual selection back to other topics. I'm out of time. I can just say, remember the bird of paradise. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I did take seven minutes.